In this tutorial, I'm going to cover the camera match tool that we covered in our last week's class. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is you need to find an image that has a good perspective to it. So you can use the, the guidelines and perspective lines uh, to match the perspective of the photo. So for this exercise, you can use a photo of a building, for example. But I'm going to just grab an image of my desktop and it'll be this um, SketchUp 2 image that I'll use. Okay, so I'm just going to place it on my desktop for now. I'll come get it a bit later. So all that you have to do is in the camera section, you're going to go and say um, match new photo. It also lives in the default tray. Okay, if we go to the default tray, there's this match photo. So nothing will appear here at the moment, but you can use this match new photo. It's going to ask you to find a photo. So if I go to my desktop, there's this photo I'm going to use. So in essence, the first thing I need to do, I need to establish where my origin will be. Uh, to carry on drawing and just remember we're going to move find a point on this perspective that will work best okay so i'm going to use i might use this corner for this exercise okay great now you can see that we need to change the perspective to match the image so i'm going to quickly i will readjust it in a minute okay so this line will work for now i'm just doing this roughly i'll come back and fine tune what i need to fine tune so this will work that line will work well, and I can maybe use this line here. But maybe to be to work more accurately, I might use this line over here. So now you can zoom in. Now you can fine tune these settings and make sure that the blue line works. You might have to do some tweaking to make sure that this line works correctly. So for example, here I might want to adjust that, and you can see the blue line starting to adjust and line up better with. And the longer you follow the line, the more accurate it is as well. Likewise with this guy, I'm going to do the same here, try and get it as best as I can. Okay, so judging how this works, I think this will be good enough for now. Okay, this line I might just get a little better. Just take it from there to there. Okay, and then move the origin up a fraction. Okay, okay, so I'm happy with the setting. The next thing we need to set, I need to... So here I'm just going to use a grid size of 1650, which is a human's height. So you just hold your middle mouse button and just bring this in for the time being to help as well. Let's use this. Okay, this will show you. So if I hover over this blue line, uh, sorry, I just want to edit. So you can edit the photo match. You can readjust the photo match if you, if you want to. So if you hover over the, the blue axis, you'll see that it gives you a grid. Now you need to set this grid to be a human height. So I would say that's about 1650 for this for this um, example. Okay, you can use something on a wall. You can measure a certain wall to give you a more accurate height. But I'm going to assume that this will be 1650 for now. Okay, I'll leave it there and then I'll finish my photo match done. Okay, all right. So now that my photo match is done, just remember you can orbit around the view, but Go back to the view if you want to carry on with the photo match. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create this wall here. Okay, very straightforward. I'm just going to start using the line tool. I'm going to follow along the green axis, come up the blue axis, and then follow the green, come back down. Okay. Alternatively, what you could have done, let me just erase the surface. You could start with, so I could start with the ruler. So from the green axis, I can come up. Remember, use arrow keys, lock it on the blue. So I'm just going to create some guidelines in which to stick. Okay, so I'm going to use this and I'll follow. And once again, if you see, if you follow it along the red axis, I'm just going to do that for now. All right, that was starting to, starting to work. And then I'm just going to use the push-pull tool and then drag it as deep as I can. Oops, opposite direction. Sorry, my mouse is very undo, undo, drag it in a bit. So it looks like I'm going to make it 180 if I measure very quickly. So while my, I'm holding it down, I can type 180 and then in the command. Okay, maybe another uh, 20 mil. So here, 20. There we go. So in essence, the wall thickness must be, ah, this is, hasn't worked. It must be on this origin. So something's gone wrong there. Let's get rid of that and let's go back here. So my origin is right. So something didn't work there. So use my tape again. Come up in line with that. Okay, now I'm going to draw my I'm going to draw a line up. 
come back down. I can move this line a bit later. Okay, I'm going to grab this this line work here and then move it. So I'm going to just move it um, a bit further back along the green axis. I'll stop over there. I'll use this bit of wall here to to fix it later on. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use my tape measure tool and I'm going to follow along the red. And here I'm going to make it, I know it's about 180, but for this example I'll make it 200. Okay. Okay, so that's 200. So I can come out of this view and I can use, here you can uh, reverse the faces because it means if I extrude it along this side now it will make, it'll make it uh, all the faces in the correct direction. Okay. Okay, go back to perspective two. Okay, now that's great. I can get rid of these guidelines. Remember, you can either delete the guidelines manually or you can go to view um, and you can say, so it's in edit and delete guidelines. You can delete all of them at one, in one go. Okay, so now I want to offset where this wall starts. So from the red axis, the wall will start over there. Try and work with round dimensions. So 18650, for example. Great, and then I'm going to offset from the green axis and come in, so make that 1200. Okay, awesome, it's given me a, a starting point to work with. Okay, go back to your camera match. Okay, so I will cut out the section now, but I'll first draw the complete wall. And how to do that again, I'm going to use my tape measure tool and come up vertical. Okay, now I've got a good point to start, so here I can use my rectangle tool. So I'm going to start right in that intersection and then follow this back. That will work for me. I'm going to keep the wall thickness the same. Just remember, reverse faces. Okay, and then I'm going to pull this out 200. Okay, great. So if I go back to my 3D view. Okay, so it would seem to suggest that this wall is slightly higher than that wall. And we're going to have a feature wall here. So once again, I can just use my tape from the top and say, I'm going to cut out this section of the wall, come back from the end. Remember, follow the green axis to make this accurate to there. Okay, great. So now I can start working and to get this out. Okay, just one other thing I want you to bear in mind. Start using your layers. So I'm going to make a layer walls. Okay, I'm going to select all this model information. Okay, I'm going to add this to my layer walls. Okay, and make this my current layer at the moment. Okay, all right. So now I can go and say edit, delete all guides. Go back here again. Great. So I've got that piece. Now I'm going to make a feature wall element. Okay, so it looks like it extends past this a bit, but it starts in line in the front there. So I'm going to make a new one, call this feature wall. Make this the current layer. Okay, what I'm also going to do is I'm going to make all these walls part of one group as well, make group. Okay, it just means that I can start working on these things in isolation as well. Okay, so now I'm going to make this feature wall. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to drag up a construction line. Okay, so here I'm going to use, so I know that it starts in this face here, that's fine. I'm just going to use it from this top of the line. I'm going to say it's that high and Actually, let me just say it's going to start from the back and it looks like it starts. Let me just see. Let me see. So if I pull the construction line, I'm just going to start the back here, put one there. Okay. And then I'm going to make it start another one from there quickly. So go back to there. So let's see if it starts more or less in the same line. It looks like the it's slightly higher, but for this exercise, I would assume that they'll probably start in the same level. I'm just going to say, Let's get to the front of this object, for example, and let's get to the back maybe. So the back of this object will probably start, let's round it off, 250. Okay, Okay. so from the back it's going to start there. All right, and then what I can do is I can create one more of these and follow, follow the green axis, for example, for the green axis, and so maybe you can lock it to that face there. So in essence, I'm going to start my feature wall now. So my feature wall can start there uh, to that point there, and this will come out. I'll see now. Let's go back here. So here I can kind of get it back. So it looks like this feature wall, 
it's going to be about, let me just undo, 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 undo. So if I pull this out, it looks like it's 250. Let's make it 250. Okay, uh, 250 while the command's active. Undo, do, undo. Click once so the command is active and type in 250. That will work. Okay, so now we've got a feature wall that comes past. That works well. All right, and these walls are slightly different. I would assume maybe that this feature wall is slightly higher. Okay, but that's for now. That will work fine. Okay, so I'm going to make sure, I'm going to assume that that's a feature wall as well. So what I'm going to do now is use my and follow along the red axis. So I would assume this other wall starts. Remember, it must be along red. So that will start there. And let's say four to sixty. Okay. And I'm going to offset that wall the same as this one, which was 200. Okay, and it's in the same line as that. So I can use this ground floor line and get that marker. I can do the same here, follow this line, and I can make sure that it's lock it on red. And then I can snap it to that point there. So those should be in exactly the same line. I can use a rectangle tool and I can follow. That's, I'm not too worried about when it stops. I'll sort that out now. Remember, reverse faces, and then pull this back by 200. Okay, so those balls are the same thickness now. Go back here. Yeah, that's starting to work well. Edit, delete guides because I don't want my drawing too crowded. Okay, the next thing is I'm going to use a construction line off this face because I want to see, remember, follow the green. I want to start a feature wall over here and let's make one from the base as well. All right, so I know where that's going to stop more or less. Okay. Let's just go back to the 3D view. I just want to see, get the height of it more or less. So here I can pull down construction line from there to there. Let's make it 220. And then drag this down, um, make it 900 for this exercise. Okay, round numbers. Okay, well, that's awesome. So that's going to start there. And then what I can do is just use a tape along the red axis. So maybe lock it on the red axis and then onto this internal face. Okay, now I've got something to work with. So now I can say I want to create a face from there. Okay, let's just quickly draw a line up. So remember, feature wall still active. Go up, go up. This will go along the red axis to there. And then you can say, lock it on the blue axis, and you can lock it to where it intersects there and finish. That's reverse faces, and then just pull this out a fraction. Okay, so let's go back to our 3D view, because this will help us to see how deep it will go roughly. Okay, so this guy I'm going to pull back. Uh, I'm going to pull it back. Maybe 200 for now. Okay. All right. So that will work in that respect. So grab all this, grab all that, and make this a group. So this is your feature wall information to make sure that's in the feature wall layer. Okay. I'm going to make sure that that's on the walls layer, walls layer, and I'm going to double click. What I might do for this example is select all this, hold Control down. I'm going to make this one one large group, group. Double click in here, select this group and say explode. Now they're all part of the same group. Okay, and that works well. Go back here again. And just very quickly, I'm going to create the step. So the step will use this again, follow my long red axis. We'll go along the green. We'll stop about there. Okay, um, so we'll go along on the internal face, so along the red axis, so it'll stop. On that line there, and let's say, let's make the step 340. Two steps. Oh, let's make it one 170. 170 is a standard step. I know there's somebody sitting there, but for this argument's sake, I would say that's about 170. Okay. Oh, uh, well, I was thinking to you, I need to produce a line where this will um, 
stop on from this face. So here I can say in the front here 170 and I can come grab this line again and work along. Remember follow the green and see where the, the window starts more or less. So let's type in 1 800. Okay. okay, so now I've got what, what's going on there. I'm going to create a new call this floor or slab. You can make it floor slab, make this your active layer, create a rectangle. So from there to that face there, and then reverse faces and pull it down to this bottom here. Okay, that's perfect. I'll take this through um, for this assignment. I'll take it through. And I'm just going to assume everything stops in this line here. So I'm going to pull it, ah, I won't take it through just yet. So this will, I'm going to pull this one in line with that. And this will, I might just do the same. Pull this in line with that. And there might be a wall that happens at the end here. So let me just go and create a wall. So I assume that there might be a bigger wall. So I'll say maybe a wall does that. And I'm going to pull this out. Pull this out 200. Okay, I think that will work for now. Don't worry about the intersection information. So here, what's nice about this now, we can use that option where we can um, view, component view, hide the rest of the model. So here, we'll hide the rest of the model. So control A. So I'm just gonna use intersect faces with model. So I want everything to intersect. So here I'm gonna raise. So if I went to X-ray mode, it will show me what I'm erasing, I'm just cleaning out some junk that I don't need just to make this more of a clean a clean object. Um, likewise with here, I can clean out, don't need that information. Okay, that will work fine. I don't need that for now. I will sort that out and I can get rid of this along with the middle. Great. Okay, switch X-ray made off. Grab this bit of floor work in here and then pull this to the back. Okay. Actually, for this exercise, I did see two steps here. So I'm going to pull this up, pull this up. I'm going to make it 170. So 170. So let me just do that again. So pick tool, click once, and then type 170. Done. Okay. And let's just check this height here. Make sure that this is uh, effective height for a Okay, so a person is usually two meters. I'll leave it one. I'll just put one step that side. That's fine. Okay. Anyway, so the purpose of this is just to reproduce a, a, a design that you're working on in essence. Okay, so I'm going to delete guides, camera, uh, delete guides. Okay, before we delete guides, I'm going to work out where this window stops, where this window started, for example. Okay, so I'll keep that guide. I'm just going to delete the rest manually. Okay, get rid of the rest. Okay, get rid of that one. Let's make sure it's not in a group. No. Okay, go back here. Okay, so in essence now I want to create where this window starts. I'm going to select everything on the floor, make group, make sure it's on the correct layer, make a new one called window. Okay, window. Okay, make this the current layer. So here I'm going to start drawing the window. So I use the up key because I want to lock it to this. Go to my 3D view. Okay, so I might have to pull that information back, but that's fine. I'm going to go to that face, go back down, go back to there. Now I've created my window. Reverse faces. Okay, now we can make this a sliding door. So for example, the door will slide from here. So all I'm going to do now is use along this face and you snap it in the middle. So I've got a line to work with there. So from this side here, I'm just going to draw a line. Ah, so let's say my mullion is uh, 30 mil. So I'm going to offset this by 15 and I'm going to draw a rectangle on this face. Okay, and I'm going to say offset this by 30 mil. Okay. So uh, what I'll do here is I'm gonna I'm gonna make this a different group for now because I will make this a decent window. So this is a sliding door, be a sliding door in front of another. But I'll use this one as a 
to drive the rest. So this I'm going to get rid of for the time being. I'll get rid of that line. I'll get rid of that line. Don't need it. Okay, so now I'm going to pull this back. Let's pull this back by 15 mil. Okay, I'm going to grab this surface and it's connecting line work. Move control, copy it back by 30 mil and reverse the face. Reverse faces. Okay, I'm going to select all this information very quickly, make it a group, and then work on the group in isolation. So it, everything disappears, and I'm just going to use some line work on the inside here very quickly. It'll make it a closed. In essence, you could have made the glass also thick, but for this purposes, I wouldn't worry about it too much. Close this guy up. Close this guy up here. You'll see the faces will start to close. Close this guy up. And then I'll just close the bottom up, and that should, that should be fine. Make sure everything's closed in here. Now let's check the side. Close the inside. It should be all closed now. And down. Use the hand key. Just want to see if everything is closed. Perfect. Okay. So now I've exited. I'll move this one. And I'm going to move this one from there. Control. And I'll snap it to there. Oh, then move in the correct spot. So there to there. And then I'll move this one back because the sliding door, in essence, will sit. So there's one panel in front of the other. So the one will slide beneath the other. So in essence, that's how you would make a sliding door, for example. Okay. And then I'll just extrude this guy past the door. So in essence, it makes a line of where that door starts. So here, I'll just make sure, go to view, uh, edit component, just reset that. And then you're going to pull this back, probably in line with the the object beneath. So here we can just zoom out. So I'm going to pull it, zoom out. It's still active. I'm going to find an edge here to work with. So yeah, I could probably bring it in a bit more. Let me see. Yeah, and this maybe just extruded one by. Let's just extruded by another hundred. Well, it's a type 100. Sorry, select the face and hit 100. Enter. Okay, that'll work for now. Okay, and I might just offset the top here, offset the top by 255, and then pull this. This will be a flat concrete roof. So you just grab this this one here, move control 255. Okay, and then I'm going to pull this to the back face of this. Okay. So just scroll around, I'll put it in. click that surface and I'll click it to there. Okay, so in essence, there's my flat concrete roof, my feature detail. Okay, just remember camera, view, uh, edit, delete guides, I need my guides. Okay, that works well. Now I just have to create my first step. So I go back here again. Okay, so from this face here, use my tape measure again. On this face, come back down a little bit green. So I'm just going to have one step in place. Okay, so here I'm just going to use, make sure my floor layer is active again. Go from there to there. 170 is a common tread right, uh, tread height. To there, back down, and then I'll just pull this guy. So what I'll do here is pull this out. Oops, pull this out. Okay, double click everything uh, and this guy and make it a group and I group this one explode okay and then this one I'll just pull to the back as well so grab this pull push pull use a push pull tool select the back and then you're gonna put it up until this face here pull. okay now in essence we've got a, a roof that follows there the next thing I want to do is just create a, a roof feature for here so I'm gonna Edit this family in place, go to my. So I just want to quickly extrude this roof. And it looks like it's in the same line as the step, so I've created that line already. So I can say from there to there, and I can pull this one. I'll finish it in a minute. Okay, then I'm going to grab this face here and pull.
pull this along until along the red axis along to this face here and then uh, what I could do is make sure that this line is 255 as well or 170 and we just see what the depth is yeah so 255 will work okay and then I can just move this line from there to there and then I can just use the push pull tool to the back use the push tool to the back and then extrude this along click once while it's active and then you can drop it at the back here okay so in essence I have a I'll just make this floor as well just for the sake okay those faces all right so now in essence I've traced this object the next thing I need to do very quickly is just put in some columns so I'm going to add a new here call this Okay, columns, make this my active layer. So here I'm just going to use some um, guides again. So I'm going to delete those guides. View, sorry, edit, delete guides, and then use my tape measure tool. And I'm going to say from here along the green axis, remember you need to work along the green axis. You can lock it along the green axis. There's going to be a column that starts there. Do it again along the green axis so make sure it's following the green axis and there's going to be one there okay there's a column there there's a column there let's go back to three view okay all right great i'm going to offset those columns by let's make it 200 the same here I'm just guessing this for now 200 but you get the idea okay and now what I can do is use a rectangle tool on the inside and draw a rectangle to there and I'm going to pull it pull this into the face itself it looks like it goes halfway so I can use the halfway point here okay and I might pull these out into the passage just so that it's more meaningful as a column. So I'll pull this out into the passage by 100. Okay. Ideally, that's not great because it will constrict your passage, but for this exercise. Okay, now that I've got one, I can make this a group. Ah, while we've got this one in place, what I'm going to do is say intersect faces with model, and then I'll select it all again and make this a group. Mind you, I could just select all this information here. Uh, right click make group and then I can use this view tool uh, in a component press the model now I can just quickly go and get rid of that stuff that's not necessary for this column so while I'm in here I can pull this face through to the end and it should disappear and that to there done okay then I can just go into here in the column yeah you can copy the group so just make sure it's in the column group and here you can just say uh, move control and then put the next one there so you don't have to go and edit two so in essence okay so in essence that will help you tremendously now you've got some kind of idea of the building so this in essence this is how you would use the camera match tool just remember I'm just going to show you this as, as an exercise if you had another perspective showing the side of this building what you would do is say place the origin and move it here keep the red and green the same okay and then all you would do now is go to photo match and say add i'm just going to use the same image again okay so here you could now go and match this photo so in essence say so now that's where my wall was going to start i could match the perspective again so if i had perspectives around the building you could now in essence um, and what's nice now is you've got a, a height that you can use for that building, which is important. Okay, just remember you need to type that height in here. But in essence, you've got something nice now to work with if you wanted to model the other side of the building, for example. So if you had perspectives going right around the building, this would help tremendously. Okay. All right, I'm not going to complete this. I'll just press escape. Um, done and I'll just get rid of this